Memes are the best part of the internet. They're the chewy center of our online experience. And now, Memes for Vegans is serving up a fresh batch of laughs, poking fun at the ups and downs of plant-based living. Discover the hilarious side of veganism with memes that joke about the struggles and joys of living without animal products. It's a lighthearted way to laugh at ourselves, whether we're vegan or not. Let's face it, we all need more memes, as well as more laughter in our lives. Memes for Vegans delivers with a constant stream of fresh air-sealed goodness to keep you giggling. And who knows, you might just find yourself nodding your head in recognition or relief. Check out Memes for Vegans for a laugh-out-loud take on compassionate living and find the link to their site in this episode's description. This is from AP News. The biggest diamond in over a century is found in Botswana. A whopping, are you ready for this? 2,492 carats. Holy crap, that's a lot of carats. It's pretty diamond, too. Looks like this uh, just a big hunk of diamond. This is from Gebronini, Botswana. The largest diamond found in more than a century has been unearthed at a mine in Botswana. And the country's president showed off the fist-sized stone to the world at a viewing ceremony on Thursday. Botswana government says the huge 24... Wow, 2400... Well, 2500 almost. 2,492 carat diamond. Second biggest ever discovered in a mine. It is the biggest diamond found since 1905. Fucking A. That's crazy. Sell that thing? You could probably... Oh, shit. You can get about, what, half a gallon of gas? You could go to Harvard for like 18 minutes? Pretty awesome. The as-of-yet unnamed diamond was presented to the world at the office of Botswana President... I'm not even going to try. It weighs approximately half a kilogram. Shit. That is crazy. Wow. That's a big-ass diamond. I wonder, well, what is it worth? Okay, here we go. Officials say it was too early to value the stone or decide how it should be sold. Another smaller diamond from the same mine in Botswana was sold for $63 million in 2016, a record for a rough gem. This is history in the making. That is amazing. They, sh- they Yeah, they, they seem to be really proud. It's a product of Botswana. Hell, I'd be proud of that shit. Exceptional rough diamond. Wow. It was found completely intact, not in pieces or anything like that. Located using x-ray technology designed to find large, high-value diamonds. Well, it certainly fucking works. That thing is huge. The weight would make it the largest diamond found in 119 years and the second largest ever dug out of a mine after the Cullinan diamond that was discovered in South Africa in 1905. The famous Cullinan 3,106 carats. This one? Yeah. It's like this one could shit out a Cullinan diamond. (laughs) That's awesome. A bigger, less pure black diamond. Really? Black diamonds are less pure? Okay. You know what? You rock. You just live your best lives, black diamonds. You're just as pure as the other guys. Don't let them fucking talk to you like that. It's racist. Look, you got something against black diamonds? Discovered in Brazil, late 1800s, but it was found above ground and was believed to have been part of a meteorite. Jeez, you even treat black diamonds like shit. All of the world's biggest stones they have unearthed behind Russia. They hold the record for stones. That's cool. If you didn't know, diamonds are formed when carbon atoms are squeezed together under high pressure deep underground. Scientists say most diamonds are at least a billion years old and some of them more than three billion years old. You're not really paying for the stone itself. When you pay, when you get something really expensive like that, you're paying for the pain in the ass it took to unearth it. Diamonds, diamond mining, yeah. That's uh, not on my list of not dangerous job. <laughs> it's a dangerous job, I'm telling you. I know, because I am a diamond miner thingy guy. And if you believe that, You've got problems. Welcome to No Disclosure. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. 
This podcast is where we go on the news, see what's happening in the world, and based like fine, expensive turkeys in the sheer audacity and craziness that is our news media, damn it. This is from Fox News. Georgia mayor arrested on felony charges after allegedly storing alcohol in a ditch for inmates. <laughs> you watched the Shawshank Redemption, but you weren't paying attention. It didn't work out that way. The mayor of a small town in Georgia, Georgia faces felony charges, alleging that he illegally stashed a bottle of gin in a ditch for a state prison work crew to access. Well... You need some mail for you and your mates. You and your work buddies, you know what I mean? Thomas Mayor Benjamin Benji Carey Cranford. Damn, that's a handle. Benjamin Benji Carey Cranford, 52, was indicted on Wednesday and arrested at the... By... Wait, I can't read today. Arrested by Georgia Bureau of... Burp, 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 burp. I don't fucking care anyway. But he's hiding alcohol for the guys working on the road crew. Yeah. Yeah, now he's going to be a part of the fucking road crew. <laughs> as we understand, the charges in this case are not related to Mr. Cranford's duties as an elected official. We do not have a comment. Of course they don't. One of theirs got in trouble for doing some shit. Earlier this month, Cranford, a former paving contractor, so he knows road work, settled a lawsuit filed months before he ran for office, accusing him of attempting to hide assets from a bonding company that was stepping in to pay some of Cranford's company debts, mine financial troubles, to ensure large-scale projects undertaken, blah 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 So he's been in trouble for, like, embezzlement and shit, too. Which, uh, yeah, I could totally see why they made him the mayor, because that kind of shit qualifies him. He will make an excellent U.S. politician. He's right in there with you. Right the fuck in there. For the U.S., I mean, it's almost a qualification at this point. This is from CBS News. Passenger opens jet... <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. Passenger opens jet's door and walks on the wing after landing at Australia Airport. My God. What is it with planes and like people freaking out here lately? Have you noticed? It's become a thing. I don't know if it's because the news is just reporting it more or if it's actually a thing. Because you know the news, they like to take things and fucking create them. You know, these, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, these fucking epidemics, they just report like blocks of shit, so you think something's happening. But this is getting well beyond that. I mean, almost every week now. And then in between episodes of No Disclosure, when I'm just kind of doing my thing, you know, I see people freaking out on airplanes. It's a thing now. The fuck's going on, you guys? Is there a gas leak in these planes or something? A passenger was arrested at an Australian airport after he left a stationary airliner through an emergency exit, walked along a wing, and then climbed down a jet engine to the tarmac on Thursday without getting himself fucking killed. Jetstar flight JQ5212 for Bobo B had arrived in Melbourne Airport from Sydney and had parked at a terminal gate when the man left the plane by the right side exit. Yeah, fucking wing walker over here. Opening the exit automatically deployed a slide from the back of the wing at the fuselage on the ground. Beep, 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 blah, blah, blah. Wow, you guys. This is... Wow, I could... After reading this article, I could build a fucking airplane from scratch. I don't need to know all the parts and shit. Okay? I do not. As soon as the plane had started coming to a stop, he got up, basically charged to where the emergency exit row is, and in the process, shoving people. Damn, you really had to get there, didn't you? Ripped open the emergency door. Jeez. I was really shocked at for oh yeah he was assessed by paramedics and taken to a hospital maybe he shouldn't be taken to a medical hospital i I, i'm just saying take him to another kind and this isn't some dumpy ass little airport somewhere in australia this is melbourne airport so some crazy asshole jumps out of the plane thankfully after it lands and goes run on a wing and he does it like you know his life fucking depends on it like he's got 13 minutes left to live Spoke of the baggage collection area of the airport an hour after the landing said passengers had been told the deployed slide had delayed the unloading of their luggage. Did not tell them why. I wouldn't either. There's a crazy asshole. (laughs) There's something on the wing. There's something on the wing. Don't you see it? (laughs) The incident. (laughs) There's an asshole on the wing. What did they say in World War II? Gremlins? No, not gremlins. Douchebags. The The incident in Australia comes one day after the Federal Aviation Administration said it had referred 43 more unruly passenger cases. See? Even the FAA is saying it's becoming a thing. 
more than 310 of cases like this just in 2022 on. Isn't that insane? Dangerous passengers put everyone at risk, just letting you know, okay? Unruly travelers face stiff fines from the FAA. I don't know if you knew that shit, but yeah, the FAA will fine you up the ass. They like doing that. That's kind of their thing. Being an asshole and freaking out on airplanes is your deal? Guess what the FAA is good at? <laughs> so we got fucking baby Huey, the wing walker over here screwing up everybody's fucking flight see I'm, I'm telling you it is a thing i don't think it's not 100 percent the news I, I bet you a million bucks the news has something to do with the shit and the rise of it they just choose you know what to fucking report on but the faa is even saying this is becoming some shit why are people freaking out on planes we need to get to the bottom of this shit maybe this should be an episode of strange places i don't know it's a mystery this is from bbc the bubica Fake watermelons full of drugs fail to fool U.S. agents. Fail to fool U.S. agents. Oh, great. Something else other countries can use to fucking laugh at us. Because... <laughs> that is the most fake-looking fucking watermelon I've ever seen. It's a bag with watermelon print on it. And then they put drugs in there, I guess, and then stuff the thing. From a distance, maybe... But come on, the, the, who the fuck looks at that and be like, yep, that's a legit watermelon. U.S. border agents have intercepted a truck carrying more than $5 million worth of methamphetamine at the U.S.-Mexico border hidden inside a shipment of <clears throat> watermelons. The drugs were wrapped in plastic painted in two shades of green to resemble watermelons. But if you get, you know, probably within six fucking feet of it, you could tell it's a bag, not a watermelon. Two tons of meth. 1,220 packages was seized by officers. Wow, good job to whoever noticed that shit. You're a real detective. Stashing drugs among produce is a common way to smuggle the illicit substances across borders. Bananas are the most popular, but officers have recently found narcotics in Gouda cheese and avocados. That's why I fucking hate avocados. The uh, U.S. Customs uh, and Border Protection officials... Oh, that was a good one. Said their officers had stopped the truck hauling a trailer at the border with Mexico and Ota Mesa. The paperwork suggested that the driver was transporting a shipment for watermelons, but an inspection revealed the parcels containing methamphetamine and obvious bags painted to look like watermelons. <laughs> and apparently they'd gotten away with it before. The driver was handed over to Homeland Security. The seizure came a week after officials at the same border crossing discovered almost 300 kilos of meth in a shipment of celery. That's gonna fuck up the taste of that celery. Mexican drug cartels are the leading producers and suppliers of meth into the U.S. Entrepreneurs. In February, Mexican security forces seized more than 40 tons of the drug. Shit. You guys got some fucking Oompa Loompas working for you or something? Man, that's a lot. Mexican officials said the lab boasted more than 200 centrifuges, boilers, condensing chambers, key equipment to make the chemical. 200 labs have been busted. My God. Oompa Loompa Doopity Doo I've got a fucking puzzle for you Oompa Loompa Doopity Dee If you are wise you'll listen to me Watermelon meth a sight to see Pink and green and juicy as we Who'd suspect it was hidden from view The Border Patrol and you Holy motherfucking shit Oompa Loompa Doopity <laughs> It's fucking drug cartels, man. You guys are some hard-working motherfuckers, let me tell you. You're pumping out some druggages. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm not sure a factory can pump out that much. That's amazing. Well, you know, gotta pay the bill somehow. <laughs> That's fucked up. Anyway, this is from the New York Post. A rescued... Oh, this article is thanks uh, in part because of Cassie, by the way. She's... She sent me this article, which is great. She's starting to notice silly shit online. She's like, hey, this would be good for no disclosure. I was like, hey, yes, it is. Rescued bald eagle, too fat to fly after gorging on a raccoon. Trying to tell me something there, Cass? <laughs> bald eagle is grounded. 
An overweight eagle was recently grounded by its plump physique after having a bit too much to eat. Oh, poor guy. The Missouri Department of Conservation was first given reports that a bald eagle at the Civil War location of Wilson's Creek National Battlefield had been hurt, but the truth was uh, something else entirely. The bird, originally reported to be injured, was found to be healthy but engorged with raccoon. So in other words, it was too fat to fly. <laughs> I know how you feel there, bird. I am too fat to fly myself. If I was Superman, you'd be fucked. I, I, you would just have to tell Zod, you know what, just, just go ahead and take it. Take, take everything. Along with x-ray photos showing an undigested paw still in its stomach. Yep, there it is. I can see the x-ray. There is a paw in its stomach. Ah. Poor, jeez, man, you hungry ass bird. Although VCA Animal Hospitals report that Amazon parrots, boogadereers, what the fuck is that? Cockatiel, I know what that is. Macaw, I know what that is. I don't know this, but oh, budgies? Is that the scientific word for budgie, really? Okay, and macaws are birds that typically struggle with obesity. Non domesticated birds are often at little risk as opposed to pets. Wild birds exercise frequently during daily activities such as flying to escape predators. <laughs> playing with other flock members, foraging for food, and searching for a mate. Just like with people, dietary changes that flavor fruits and vegetables are the most viable way for birds to lose some weight. So, they put this bald eagle on a fucking diet. I don't know how you're going to do that. No idea. It's not, it's not like it's going to fucking learn. What are you going to do? Have it watch Richard Simmons or some shit? You're going to put it on a diet. It's going to lose weight. You're going to release it into the wild. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to find the first fucking raccoon it can find. Right? It's like being locked up or something, and then you finally, you know, you're on the way home, your buddy's driving you home, you know, from the fucking prison or whatever, and you just want some fucking McDonald's. That's it. That's exactly what the seagull is gonna do. First fucking raccoon he finds. You're gonna be in the same boat again. Same fucking shit. Get him a George Foreman grill or something. You know, I don't know. But you know what I was thinking the whole time I was reading that article? Oh, the symbolism. <laughs> America's majestic bald eagle grounded by its own gluttony. Who needs freedom in flight when you can gorge on raccoon? I mean, come on, eagle. You're supposed to soar through the skies. Be like the image of America here, not waddling around like, well, an American. <laughs> and the x-rays? Oh, man. It's like the ultimate food baby photo. Hey, I'm not injured. I'm just engorged with raccoon. No biggie. I'm surprised it didn't get a fucking food coma after that. But seriously, who knew birds could get obese too? I guess even wildlife isn't immune to the temptations of overeating. Maybe we should start a bird-sized Weight Watchers program. I started that, so if you do it, you owe me some money. And the best part, the chunky eagle gets rehabilitated, released back into the park like a feathered version of a celebrity rehab story. I'm back, flying high. Diet of fruits, veggies. But you know what, eagle? It's not about just, you know, getting on a diet, okay? It's not about that. It's about lifestyle change. Try to teach that shit to an eagle. It's not gonna, try, try teaching anything to an eagle. Eagle's just gonna be like, fuck you, I'll do what I want, raccoon. It's not gonna work out, guys. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I admire that. Wanting to nurse it back to health, get it to lose some fucking weight. Good, I'm just telling you. Eagles, they don't fucking listen. Now, I know this. They don't fucking listen. You tell them, you teach them, you know, you do what you gotta do. They get the certificate, they get the license, you know, all that stuff, and they just go out and they do whatever the fuck they want. It sticks for a while, but unlike chickens, chickens are decent people. You might think they're mean, but you get in their personal space, you know, that it, that's when they get mean. They're usually pretty nice. Eagles, they're a different ball of wax, okay? Chickens are like, uh, you know, just your normal, everyday hosp hospitality, kind of southern kind of thing, you know? Eagles are like people from New Jersey. Just think of it that way. You know, I was just thinking, God damn, this show's been around for a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> we started this shit in 2019. Been doing no disclosure every week ever since. You know, aside from like sicknesses and vacations and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I, I can't believe I've been doing this for this long. Every week. And you know what? The news still manages to surprise me every once in a while. Earth, humans, eagles, you know. <laughs> you still have tricks up your sleeve, don't you, world? I love it. This is from CNN World. A toddler cried nonstop during a flight. Two strangers locked her in the bathroom. Where was the parent? <laughs> what was the, what was the toddler doing? Be like, hey, mom, I gotta go take a shit. Where's the bathroom in this thing? All right. 
I'm gonna go light up a cigarette in there so nobody come knocking. And then they just lock the kid in there. What's the parent? What the parent do? Just be like, okay, Jim, I'll see you here in a minute. Yep, I'll see you later. Don't wait up. <laughs> they just waiting for the baby to come back. Two airline passengers who locked a stranger's crying grandchild in a plane restroom. What? Where is the grandparent in this? I'm just wondering. Caused outrage in China and sparked a heated online debate on how to handle upstate children in public spaces. Well, I got an idea. If it's somebody else's kid, how about you leave it the fuck alone? Because, you know, you risk getting your ass fucking killed touching somebody else's fucking kid. You know what I mean? That's not up to you. The incident went viral this week after one of the two women involved posted a video on Chinese social media which showed them inside a locked laboratory with the wailing girl who appeared to be only a year old. We won't let you out unless you stop crying. You fucking stupid piece of shit. The kid's a year old, dumbass. They don't understand what the fuck you're saying. As the girl stopped crying, the woman filmed the video, picked her up, and told her, if you make any noise again, we'll come back to the bathroom. The incident took place August 24th. Man, you fucking bastards. God, what a shitty thing to do. Scare a fucking kid like that, locking him in a bathroom? Where the fuck was the grandparent? Flying with her grandparents cried nonstop during the nearly three-hour flight. I understand. It's nerve-wracking. It would drive people absolutely fucking bananas. You keep your goddamn hands off of little kids. Period. I don't give a shit how much they're crying. You fucking psychopath. This is the kind of person that would put someone like a baby in a fucking oven for crying too much. I'm serious. My God. Oversight of the crew. It condemned the two passengers' behavior. Well, I hope so. One of the women who posted a video online, because, yeah, not only did she do it, she posted a video of the motherfucker. We were all once children. Don't be a cold-blooded piece of shit. Adults in their 30s can have emotional breakdowns, but people don't allow toddlers to have theirs. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's fucking weird, man. There's something really disturbing to me that someone would grab somebody else's kid and a one-year-old at that and punish them for being upset? You're fucking crazy. Multiple Chinese state media outlets have also weighed in, accusing the two women of inappropriate behavior and calling for greater understanding from the... No, it's not for the public. The public does not need greater understanding on how to deal with crying children. You just need to remove these two fucking sociopathic pieces of shit out of society. That's all you need to do. (laughs) I know it's a thing, and parents do a shitty job of managing their kids' behavior. I haven't seen anything about the grandparent in this article, so more than likely the grandparent is just fucking sitting there jerking off, not doing shit, not raising the kid, not telling the kid to be quiet, not trying to comfort the child or anything. Why are you punishing the kid? Go punch out fucking grandpa. He's in it. (laughs) Seriously. So even more people freaking out on a fucking plane. Say it's becoming a thing. If the FAA says so, then it must be true. <laughs> because it coincides with the internet. Oh, yeah. Internet, can't really believe. FAA, I eh, can't really. But those two things together, yeah. It's on the internet and the FAA. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is how you fact check shit. <laughs> if you guys are thinking any of this is serious. It's from NBC News. Officials probe death of Wells Fargo employee found in her cubicle four days after last scanning into work. Four days it took them to find a person dead at their desk? Where they work for fucking Solera? Denny's Pud Home 60 was found dead on August 20th. (laughs) That's my birthday. In her Arizona office, police say the preliminary investigation shows no signs of foul play. Well, if someone knew about the body and didn't say anything... I would call that foul play. Not reporting shit to the coppers. Doesn't that place have security cameras or some shit? 60-year-old Arizona in the U.S. where we have cameras and shit. You know, it's not like this happened in fucking Riyadh. Wells Fargo employees scanned into her office on Friday on what appeared to be an ordinary workday, then four days later found dead in her cubicle. Denise Prudhomme. Prudhomme. P-R-U-D-H-O-M-M-E. Prudhomme. Found dead August 20th. My birthday. In her office in Tempe. Sorry. She had last scanned the building at 7 a.m. on August 16th, a Friday, and then there was no further skin in or out of the office, and nobody fucking noticed. Damn, she was dead, by the way. Cause of death is pending. Determination by the Medicopa County Medical Examiner. Police said the preliminary investigation showed no signs of foul play. Investigation currently underway. Damn. 
An employee who spoke with KPNX on the condition of anonymity. (laughs) You know, there's a problem. When someone in an office has been found dead and no one knew shit for four days, and someone says, on the condition of anonymity, (laughs) that should be a part of the investigation. You don't just go, okay. Said that a colleague found her at her desk while walking around the building. Several people had smelled a foul odor but believed it to be faulty plumbing. Oh, boy. Wow. Either that office has some damn good air fresheners there, or the person who died at their desk. I, I've, I'm not making any assumptions here. I don't want to speak ill of the dead. But, you know, you have to do your own investigation in your head. Try to figure some things out. You know, maybe this person was a real asshole, and everybody just kind of ignored it. <laughs> oh, they had a heart attack at their desk. Good. Bob was a dick. Wells Fargo can... Oh, she... Well, I think Bob could be a girl's name. Fuck it. I know a guy named Lindsay. We're deeply saddened by the loss of our colleague, Denise Prudhomama. See, they got to issue statements like that. Listen how matter of fact this is. Our thoughts are with her family and loved ones. We are in contact to ensure they are well supported during this difficult time. We are committed to the safety and wellness of our workforce and that it is reviewing our own internal procedures after this event. I think it goes beyond reviewing internal procedures. You guys left a body there. Internal procedures. We need to review our internal procedures. This goes fucking beyond that, okay? A body was found at a desk. It was four days ago. It's not a procedural problem. (laughs) It's a... I don't know. Something else problem. You guys figure it out. I got enough shit on my plate. Counselors have been made available to support employees. Fort Holmes fellow employees were told of her death after the company notified her family. I would be suing some ass. How come nobody fucking noticed? You know, the family's going to be really pissed about this, right? They're going to be fucking pissed. I, I don't blame them either. Do not. God, four days at the office. Can you believe this? 60-year-old woman. Goes to work on a Friday, scans into her office, and then nobody noticed she's dead for four days? What'd you think? She was just taking a fucking long lunch break? The worst part, she was found in a cubicle, just sitting there like she was waiting for a meeting in heaven. It's like something out of a fucking horror movie. I mean, the fact that several people smelled a foul odor but thought it was just faulty plumbing, come on. If it smells like death, it's probably death. Either that, you know, that's why I said this person was probably the office asshole. And everyone was just like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> and we- <laughs> Wells Fargo trying to save face, saying they're committed to the safety and wellness of our workforce. Yeah, sure, after the fact. Where was that commitment when Denise was sitting dead at her cubicle for four days? We need to look out for each other, especially in the workplace. And if you work for Wells Fargo, do a double check for me, huh? And from the file of people who earned a special place in hell... Thief who stole a gorilla statue from a Melbourne retirement village admits he made a silly mistake. A mistake? Theft is a mistake. Okay. And you stole it from a fucking retirement village? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special place in hell for you there, asshole. A thief had admitted to a very silly mistake. (laughs) Real funny. And pinching a beloved gorilla statue from a retirement village, Matthew Newbold on Friday pleaded guilty to stealing... A massive garden ornament named Gary from a retirement village. You piece of shit. 33-year-old went to Leith Park Village with a friend to buy a chest of drawers when he spotted the gorilla statue perched on the tree stumps, and this grown-ass person thought it'd be funny just to steal it. Member of the public saw the gorilla perched in the back of the vehicle and snapped a photo before contacting police. Totally got a license plate and everything. Also disqualified from driving at the time of the theft, lost his license in July of 23. Wow, this guy's a real fucking winner. Was that a mistake too? His lawyer, Rebecca Elder, good luck to you, Miss Elder, told the court Newbold made a stupid and opportunistic decision to steal Gary. You from a retirement fu- fucking retirement home? What's his bail? I just, I want to know this. But he stole it from a fucking retirement home. Well, what an asshole. I just can't believe the balls on that guy. Matthew Newbold, you absolute fucking legend, I guess. Stealing a giant gorilla named Gary from a retirement village? That's some next level bullshit right there. Text messages to friends? Stole a gorilla, so what? Man, you're like a real life cartoon character, but a stupid one. What are you thinking? You go buy a chest of drawers and end up swiping a giant gorilla statue? That's like me going to the grocery store for milk and coming home with a live goddamn elephant. And the best part, you got caught because someone saw Gary chilling in the back of your fucking stupid truck and snapped a photo. You should have just left Gary alone, mate. 
Now you're facing a community corrections order and a sentence hearing. Not worth it, dude. But hey, at least you admitted it was a very silly mistake. That's the first step to recovery, right? So here's to you, dick. May you stand, fucking stay out of trouble. Find a new hobby that doesn't involve stealing giant garden ornaments, driving, or just fucking existing for that matter. And that's all we got, ladies and gentlemen. Special, <laughs> make sure to go on Asylum817.com. That's Asylum817.com for all things no disclosure related. All the social media links are there as well as the link to get to our Patreon account where you can get early access, ad-free, bonus things, outtakes, bloopers, things, and and stuff. No, go check it out. Go check. <laughs> There's stuff that we do for the patrons depending on the tier that you're on. It's a lot of fun over there. A lot of fun. Join the party, kids, okay? Now, if you want to support the show, uh, just you listening to it, coming back every week, that's all the support a guy needs. But if you want to do a little extra, eh, Patreon. You know, I give back, too. So anyway, guys, uh, shout, out to the, <laughs> shout out to the patrons, by the way. My brain is done. My brain's like, Billy, you need to stop because I can't even say my own name at this point. The Cuckle Homestead YouTube channel, Dilla Gaff, all our other patrons. Thank you. And I, wow, yeah, my brain is done. We'll catch you later, guys. <laughs> See you next week, okay? I love you all. And be fancy. Wow, my brain's fucked. Staring into the eyes of that once stolen gorilla. I swear his facial expression changed. It did. Now, he's got the look of fear in his eyes. And you don't want that on, on a gorilla. Y you don't. Because the gorilla was guarding the building. Now, he's just, he, he's got the fear of God in him. He's going to think twice. You know what I mean? He's going to hesitate. Uh, poor guy. We have to put him down. Did you know it's the faces here? No disclosure, faces missed. Confiscated evidence. No smoking gun. Nothing has a 